Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Jesus Christ, our Lord, you are the radiance of the Eternal Father. You enlightened the world with your divine teachings and filled it with knowledge and filled it with knowledge through the simplicity of your apostles. Make us worthy to praise you as we celebrate the feast of your chosen apostles, Peter and Paul. By their witness, may we come to understand your hidden mysteries and keep your life-giving commandments, that we may be made worthy to share in their happiness. We raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace be with the church and your children. Praise, glory, honor, and praise to the Father most holy, who sent his only begotten Son for our salvation, and to the glorious Son who chose Peter and Paul and filled them with wisdom and holiness and sent them out to preach, and to the Holy Spirit who strengthened and supported them in their apostolic mission. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast and all the days of our lives and forever. Amen. O Christ our God, you were sent to us by the Father. You are the high priest whom we profess as the merciful and forgiving one. You chose twelve apostles, and by your Holy Spirit gave them wisdom. You sent them to proclaim the gospel of life and salvation. You honored Peter and Paul, two of your chosen apostles and true witnesses. Peter and Paul are two temples, and in them dwells the Spirit of God, the Word who became flesh. Peter and Paul are two jewels adorning the crown of the Holy Church, the Bride of Christ. Peter and Paul are two pillars upon which the Holy Church has been built. O oh, now, O oh Lord, we ask you through this intercession and with the fragrance of this incense to look upon us with the eyes of mercy and not to forsake us who implore you. Strengthen the weak and heal the sick and satisfy the hungry. Bring back those who are far and protect those who are near. Forgive sinners except those who repent and pardon our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest. May we worship you and be united with your chosen apostles, Peter and Paul, with your mother, the Virgin Mary, and with all the choirs of the prophets, apostles, and martyrs. You are good and compassionate, and we raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever.
O Apostles Peter and Paul, as we celebrate your feast, we ask you to raise in your own hands the fragrance of this incense which we have offered, that it may be a sweet fragrance and a pleasing sacrifice. Through your intercession, may God forgive all of our sins and favorably remember all the children of the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. Kadishat Aloha. Shout with joy from the mountains, the apostles preached good news. Offer praise to the Lord God, may he help us through their prayers. On the rock of St. Peter, Jesus built his holy church. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Barach Murabun. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and her children forever. Brothers and sisters, to my shame I say that we were too weak. But what anyone dares to boast of I am speaking in foolishness, I also dare. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they descendants of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I am speaking like a foolish person. I am still more, with far greater labors, far more imprisonments, far worse beatings, and numerous brushes with death. Five days at the hands of the Jews, I received 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. I passed a night and a day on the deep, on frequent journeys, in dangers from rivers, dangers from robbers, dangers from my own race, Dangers from Gentiles, dangers in the city, dangers in the wilderness, dangers at sea, dangers among false brothers and sisters. In toil and hardship, 
through many sleepless nights, through hunger and thirst, through frequent fastings, through cold and exposure. And apart from these things, there is the daily pressure upon me of my anxiety for all the churches. Who is weak, and I am not weak? Who is led to sin, and I am not indignant? If I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weakness. Praise be to God always. The praise, glory, and honor of the Most Holy Trinity. Burn this incense. Kyrie eleison. Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior, announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew, who proclaimed life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. Remain silent, O listeners, for the Holy Gospel is about to be proclaimed to you. Listen and give glory and thanks to the Word of the living God. The Apostle Matthew writes, when Jesus had gone into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Whom do men say that the Son of Man is? And they replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he said to them, But who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus said in answer to him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, You are Peter, and upon this rock, I shall build my church, and the gates of death shall never prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Messiah. This is the truth, peace be with you. If I must, if one must boast, I will boast in my weaknesses. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. So let's do a follow-up to the mind of Christ, this grace and illumination which is offered to us. We just simply spoke about it last week, but of course, what is this transformation of the mind, the spirit, the body, meant to actually mean? Oftentimes in the modern world, religion is just some kind of like a fairy tale. It's just a once upon a time story. And it's a total falsification of what the gospel actually is. The gospel is a transformation of the individual who receives that word of healing, of redemption, of salvation. But of course, because it's a word, what God is looking for is an echo. Is there a response to what I say to you? We've all had experiences of talking to people who are clearly not listening to us. They throw in, "Uh uh uh-huh, uh-huh, on occasion to make it sound like they're listening, but we know that they're not hearing what we're saying. And this really is the fundamental reaction of every human being in general, humanity we can say, to the voice of God. On occasion there's an uh uh-huh, and then we get on with the more important things like paying our mortgage. And of course, the whole notion of communication of the word to us is to transfer to us the mind of Christ, as St. Paul said last week. So what we want to look at today is what are known as the three stages or the three degrees or the three states of the spiritual life. That there are qualities that come with the response of grace within our lives. It's especially seen in the Syriac Fathers. They write very clearly about three different stages. And the reason why they do this is first and foremost because St. Paul himself in talking about the human person, the human being, speaks of the human individual as being body, soul, and spirit. And because of that tripartite division, the fathers very simply just take them. Well, if man is individually substantially one, but is, we can see, material, animation, soul, and spirit, which is giving us the capacity to the divine, well, then the transformation and the healing by grace given to us must also pertain to those three aspects of human life. And so they speak of these degrees, and the reason why we're doing it today is because it parallels in the Gospels that are told to us about the life of St. Peter, of Simon. Simon is probably is the apostle, other than St. Paul. These are the two men that we know most about. Some of the apostles are names. They're names and we have traditions that they preached in an area on the planet. And that's it. Other than that they were martyred at the end for the gospel. But Peter and Paul, I mean today, you have it in the bulletin today. Paul, is, he just goes on. All the things he's done, the shipwrecks, being beaten, the number of people who have betrayed me, all of my enemies chasing me down, all of this. But he finishes that whole litany by saying, look, really, if you really, we were supposed to be boasting because he thinks this is stupid. He says, if one really must boast, well then if I'm going to boast in something, I'm going to boast about how the fact that I really am nothing Because then you'll understand that all the things that have been done, all these parishes established, all of these churches set up and surviving shipwreck and being tried to stone to death and being beaten by rods, flogged, that it's not because of me, but because of God and what God accomplishes. And I want you to understand that because I'm going to tell you how really profoundly weak and nothing I am. That's why that phrase is thrown in there. Because it's the grace of God that transforms us when we let it do so. The first thing to understand about the spiritual life is it's a reciprocity of friendship with God. God communicates his divine charity to us and we respond or we don't respond. But that reciprocity means that there's two engaged in this. Fundamentally, initially, of course, it's the divinity, it's God. But we respond. And in the spiritual life, what it is, is in the beginning, it's really kind of, it seems and really is mostly us doing all of this stuff. Observing the fast days, 
following our observances, trying to remember to pray in the morning, trying to remember to frame our day in with a conscious acknowledgement of God. We pray in the morning, we pray. These things, and we seem so much that, oh, this is exhausting. And during a pandemic, I'll just stay at home, it's fine. They won't let us in anyway. And by September, that person will be very far away from the voice of God, because that's just human nature. So because of this, what happens is in the spiritual life, as God gets, is able, allowed by us individually to get a foothold, as the spiritual life progresses, it becomes less us and more God working. So that when you read the lives of the saints and you read about like some, someone like St. Vincent de Paul and all of the things that he did in charity, you're really mostly reading about the last 20 years of his life. Because the first 40, 50 years are just slugging away. You're just being faithful. But what happens as a spiritual life progresses and grace truly penetrates the soul, it becomes less us and more God. And that's why you see at the end of their lives this full flourishing in those last two decades. Because God is finally, if we were to say in human terms, finally, you've gotten out of the way and let me accomplish what I've always wanted from all eternity to do in your life. Because after all, God would not have created each of us individually if he did not have an idea of what good he wanted to accomplish in the world. No life is purposeless. No life has no meaning. It is absolutely impossible. So what are these three stages? Well, of course, the fathers break it up primarily on that first part, slugging it away, doing our fasting, following this, doing our daily prayers. It's really about things that I do. It's very corporal. It's very body. It's very down to earth. And that's the first degree. And the quality of that first degree, and when I say degrees, we should throw out the caveat to understand that I'm not talking about stages in life so that you're going to be in the corporal degree of the spiritual life for the first 10 years of when you're being Catholic. These things will overlap, and there will be moments, even with a beginner, where God will touch them, and in a moment they will be raised to the highest places of contemplation, and then he lets them go back to where they really are. That's to encourage them. Know that there's something ahead of you, just raised up, Glorious, magnificent, oh, this is beautiful, I love this. And then, boom, he lets, it drops us. But that's the, another degree of the third degree of the spirit. And that first aspect, the main quality of it is asceticism. We make the effort. Now, of course, and for many of our Latin friends, when you say the word ascetic, everyone goes, ugh. It's abstinence on Fridays. It's a sometimes fasting, maybe, perhaps. The East, of course, you're supposed to be fasting every Friday, every Wednesday, throughout the entire year. We're in the middle, of finishing up today, the fast of Saints Peter and Paul. And don't worry, you can catch the next one, because it will start on August 1st for the Dormition, the Assumption. I have 14 days of a fast then, so don't worry, you can catch up. But what happens is as God, and at this level, this is Saint Peter in the beginning of his life. At the beginning of his life, when he's introduced, by his brother Andrew to our Lord. There's a moment in which they're fishing and they come in and they've caught nothing and our Lord is talking to them and he tells them, throw the net over on the side, even if it's the middle of the morning. Yes, it's all right, it will work. So Peter just does it. He's the professional. He knows you don't go fishing in the middle of the day. They're not eating. It's dusk, dawn. You know, you do this at different times of the day depending on what you're catching. But he throws it over. And of course, he has this enormous catch of fish that just are there after having fished all night with nothing. But Peter's reaction to that presence of our Lord by miracle, he says to our Lord, go away from me. I'm a sinful man. Now, really, who in a friendship of love ever wants to hear someone say, you know, just go home now. I'm not good, in this, I'm not good enough in this conversation. Just go home. Well, you might leave, but you're, you're at least going to be very 
surprised by this reaction, but it's certainly not going to be something which is going to foster the love of friendship. So that's St. Peter's beginning. Lord, I see the hand of God here, it's a miracle, so go away, because I am so falling short of where I should be as a man. That's the corporal. So when we say ascetic, the word in Latin, ascasis, means effort. It just means that in the beginning we have to be serious on this life of grace working within us. The second degree, of course, is the level of the soul. And so the fathers very strangely call it the psychical, psyche. You know it in the word psychology. But of course in the Greek it's psyche. And so psyche, the psychala, a level is now the person is elevated to a higher level to be moving forward. And for St. Peter, that's today's gospel, in which our Lord says, well, who, what do people say about me? Oh, they're all confused, Lord, really. They think you've come back from the dead and you're John. They think you're some dead prophet who's come back. They really have no idea. But notice the first question our Lord asked him is, what do men say of me? What do people out there say about me? And then when they start throwing all these answers out, then our Lord turns the question and he says, but who do you say that I am? That's a totally different question now. You've been with me now. You've been with me for a while at the second degree of formation of grace. Who do you say that I am? And Simon steps forward and says, you are the Messiah. You are the son of the living one. And immediately, if I must boast, if one must boast, I will boast of my weaknesses. Our Lord immediately says to Simon, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. Not by watching me do you know that I'm the Messiah. Not by just simply watching me, you know I'm the son of the living God. It's my Father in heaven who has revealed that to you. And in the second degree, as we enter deeper into grace, that is the aspect. Its quality is to have the habitual aspect of what we call infused contemplation. That in the individual who's in the second degree of the spiritual life of the Syri Syriac fathers, that what is being done is God is on a regular basis touching and illuminating and how that person is responding to what we call infused contemplation. That's the second progress in the spiritual life. And the last one, and so I can say last one so you know it's almost done and we can continue to turn the putty in the seat, though at least it's a little bit cooler than it was. The problem is, is all of our windows have been sealed shut so we can't open the windows in the choir to let the hot air ever get out, so it will be this temperature until October. Sorry, but you're forewarned. So in the third degree, at the spirit level, that is the transformation where the individual is in a habitual manner conscious of God's presence. When they see the flowers, when they see the Kennebec, when they see the trees, when they speak to someone at the grocery store, they see and are conscious of God's presence now, as conscious as you are now of this tabernacle and of this altar and of this divine presence within this church. They live habitually, whether gardening, driving, going to the doctors, being in surgery, shopping. They are always aware of the continual presence of the divine which isn't anything miraculous because God is always present. They have just been transformed by grace to be aware of it in a habitual, conscious manner. It's in the lives of the saints when you read them. I think it's St. Ignatius of Loyola, walking along outside in the park. He's walking with one of the other confreres. And in the middle of the conversation, he looks down at the bed of flowers. And he says, yes, I know, I know, I know. Please be quiet. Because the he's talking to one of the other priests, but the flowers, the trees, the sky, everything is praising God and this awareness of the creator. So he just blurts out in the middle, yes, please, tone it down. I have another conversation going on. That is the lives of the saints when you come to truly the spiritual degree to have this habitual understanding of consciousness of God's presence. So there you have goals. Those are the three states to know where we're moving in our spiritual life. 
And the individual is not a good judge of where I am at individually, which is why we have confessors, which is why we have spiritual directors. And in the East, we don't call them spiritual directors because it sounds like some guy in a collar who's telling you what to do. It's better in the East. We call them spiritual fathers. Who is my Abba? Who is the man that I go as a soundboard to help me figure out in the midst of the confusion of my life what God is trying to do with me by grace? And so that what I've given you this morning of this breakdown of three is, Saint, is John of Daliatha, or John the Venerable. He lived in the eighth century. Mesopotamia, between the Euphrates, the Tigris, and his writings. This doctrine eventually also spreads to the West, so it's really universal now, this idea of the three degrees of grace. So in order to leave you, I want to leave you with a quotation of John of Daliatha. Oh, I didn't give you the example in Simon's life for the third degree. I'm very sorry. So at the risk of another five minutes of this heat. When Peter is in Rome in the 60s and Nero unleashes his full persecutions against the church, this is not in scripture, but this is a Roman tradition. That Simon, in the midst of all this, our Lord said that when persecution breaks out, you can flee to the mountains. You can flee. You don't have to stay there and say, okay, chop it off. Our Lord does not require that. You can run and hide. And throughout the history of the church, there have been many bishops who have hidden, not to hide from death, but so that they stay alive, so they can keep directing the parishes and the churches from their hiding place. And Simon did something similar. And so he started to leave Rome, and he walked along the Via Appia going south, this ancient road which is now 3,000 years old. We can't even keep I-95 in good repair. This road's still there. Well, it's a bit overgrown, but it's still there. And as Simon goes out and he reaches kind of around the first mile marker out, he sits down on a stone. He just rests for a moment. Not because a mile is a long distance, but because everything is stressful, like today, everything. The pandemic, the burning, the destruction, the looting, the chaos, the anarchy, the anger, the fury, the hatred, the demonic is all around us. And Simon, because people are dying in the city under Nero's persecution, under this stress, he just sits down to consider all the things that are going on. And as he's sitting on this boulder, there's a man who walks by. He just sees the feet going by. And when he looks up, he realizes it's our Lord. Now, this is the year 67. Our Lord had ascended in glory 30-some years beforehand. And he sees our Lord. And he says, Lord, where are you going? Because, of course, our Lord's walking the opposite direction. He's walking toward the city. And he just simply turns and he looks at Simon and he says, I'm going into the city to be crucified for you in your place. And then he disappeared. That notion of the constant consciousness of the divine presence is manifested very clearly there. Simon receives an answer, not of something which was the only thing he could have done, but what was the better thing to do. And Simon got up and he walked back into the city and of course he was crucified, as Paul was also martyred. In the Roman tradition, they died on the same day, June 29th. Different places in the city, one crucified and one decapitated. So that is the last of these images of this presence that we're conscious of. And if you go to Rome now, at that place near the tombs, near the catacombs of St. Calixtus, you'll find a little tiny chapel. It's not on the tourist tour trail. And it's called Quo Vadis Domine, which in Latin is just the question that Peter asks, Lord, where are you going? So it's a little church, and there's a stone in the middle of it that has been placed there. And there's divots in this stone. And the Roman tradition is this is actually the stone that our Lord stood on, and these are the footprints in the stone. It's in the middle of the church. So with this degree that we move forward, it's, about, it's profoundly based upon the wisdom of God and God's charity, his love for us. So we ask that our Lord open up our souls and our spirits and our bodies, corporal, psychical, 
spiritual, to open ourselves to the life of grace that our Lord wishes to accomplish in our individual lives, which is not like anyone else's life. They will all be unique in holiness and in charity. So now I can leave you with the quotation of John Daliatha. He says that when grace descends, when that voice comes down, when that grace descends upon us and the mind, the spirit of the individual, man, woman, when the mind will look up upon, grace will shine the rays of light that dawn upon it from the divine essence, from the divinity itself. Thereby, the spirit, the individual ascends and penetrates day by day in proportion to its diligence and to its watchfulness being awake. To the degree that it is, to its watchfulness and its diligence, it ascends and penetrates day by day from glory to glory through the Lord, the Spirit, being transformed into likeness without likeness. Remember in the Syriac tradition, Every one of us, Adam and Eve all the way down, each one of us, has been created in the image of the Word incarnate, the Christ. And so grace is just saying, you're way away here. Listen up, show a little seriousness, and let's move back to the image in which you were originally created and become the perfect likeness of my Son in his incarnation. What could be more beautiful as a purpose of human life than that? So may John Daliatha, especially Peter and Paul, intercede for us. Open our minds to this reality that God is calling us to. And may their prayers be a rampart to us always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and through the Holy Spirit there was in time the Virgin Mary and the Amen. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the glory and glory of life, who has spoken to the cross. We believe in one holy God and that's our church. We confess on baptism of the forgiveness of sins. And we look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So I am afraid I totally threw off all the ushers. Uh, in part, I don't know if they even came through with the collection. Okay, you did? All right. Actually, this is the way we're supposed to do it. So maybe we'll just, the reason why I do it is because in the summertime, my brain becomes jello. It just melts with the heat. So the collection from now on will probably do it this way instead of having the sacred moment of the money and when we sit, just wait. So we'll probably do this during the actual offertory and the procession, that is when you make your offertory as part of that whole collection together. So we will continue then on page 749. <laughs> Wein ob sugo taibo to feo lel baito mes kudu haye klod kudu
Almighty Lord and God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, Saint Mary and Saint Jude and Saint Irenaeus and Saints Peter and Paul. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. We continue with the anaphora of the Twelve Apostles on page 754, 754. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Merciful and holy Lord and Father, through your only begotten Son, you have prepared this spiritual banquet for us. Accept the offering of this bloodless sacrifice and grant us the gift of your Holy Spirit. Make us worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with pure hearts and divine love, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace to your holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor with love and faith that are pleasing to God.
Lord, may your peace and security and your true love and the divine mercy be with us and among us all the days of our lives, that we may raise glory and thanks to you now and forever. Amen. O oh Lord, we bow before you and ask you to look upon us with mercy. Make us worthy to approach your holy altar with pure hearts and holy souls and bodies that we may raise glory and thanks to you now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship Him with humility. It is right and just. Truly it is right and just to glorify and praise you, O God the Father, for you are holy and the giver of life. You are blessed with your only begotten Son and your living Holy Spirit. You are surrounded by the cherubim and seraphim who sing with pure voices and heavenly melodies. They cry out, glorify, and proclaim. Father, full of mercy, holy is your only Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and holy is your life-giving Spirit. You are holy and the giver of all that is good. For our salvation, your only begotten Son became flesh of the pure Virgin Mary, and by his divine plan he saved and redeemed us. Kyrie eleison. Wabiamu haudaktum hashodi lema bedhayen. An sabe lahma mida kori shonto. O barahu kodesh. Waksu ya belital mida kodo mora. Sabahula mehene ulhu. O no denita. Bahuro dil, dahlo faikun, wahlo psagie, meta paseo meti hem. Hosoyon, how may wa hoyen al alam alamin. Alcoso damsik woman hamro woman mayo Barahu Kodesh Uyabel Talmida Kado Mara Sabishta Mene Pulho O no Denita Dumahodila Dia Tiki Hadato Whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do so in memory of me until I come again. Lord, love 
Father of all people, we remember your plan of salvation, and we ask you to have mercy on your worshippers and to save your inheritance when you appear at the end of time, to reward all people justly according to their deeds. For this your church implores you, and through you and with you implores your Father, saying, As we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we profess our faith in you and we ask you, have compassion on us, O God, have mercy on us and hear us. Anin Maria, Anin Maria. The highest descent he may make is spread the body of Christ our God. in this chalice the blood of Christ our God. Amen. May these holy mysteries be for the forgiveness of sins, the healing of souls and bodies, and the strengthening of consciences so that none of our your faithful may perish. Rather make us worthy to live by your Spirit and to lead a pure life. We raise glory to you now and forever. Amen. We offer you, O Lord, this divine sacrifice for your holy church, especially for our fathers and shepherds, Francis, the Pope of Rome, Bishara Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, and all the bishops of the true faith, with blameless lives, and with purity and holiness, may they guide your church and present to you a faithful people who honor your name. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, your people here before you, especially those who have presented these offerings. Forgive them so that they may always live blameless lives in your presence and recognize the blessings that you bestow upon them. For you are good and rich in graces. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord have mercy. Remember, O Lord, civil leaders throughout the world, that they may stand for justice and establish peace. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, all those who have pleased you from the beginning, especially Mary, the Holy Mother of God, and the prophets, apostles, martyrs, and confessors, John the Baptist, Stephen the Archdeacon, St. Joseph, St. Jude, St. Irenaeus, assist us through their prayers and make us worthy to rejoice with them in your kingdom. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, the fathers and teachers of the true faith who have endured sufferings for the sake of your church and your people. May we truly and faithfully follow in their footsteps. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord have mercy. Remember, O Lord, the faithful departed who have left us and have gone to their rest hoping in you, awaiting their life-giving voice calling them to life. Accept the offering we present you on their behalf, and have mercy on them in your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. Grant 
grant us pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. Compassionate Lord, may we, your lowly servants, be made worthy to pray with purity and holiness, and to call upon you, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of God. Amen. Yes, O Lord, lover of all people, deliver us from the evil one and from his deceitful ways. And do not forsake us, lest temptation overcome us. For yours is the kingdom, with your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. O oh Lord, bless your faithful people who bow before you. Deliver us from all harm and make us worthy to share in these divine mysteries with purity and holiness, that through them we may be forgiven and made holy, and we raise glory to you now and forever. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Amen. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit, blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth, to him be glory. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins, and for new life, O Lord our God, give you the glory of our
We thank you, O Lord God and Father, and we ask that this divine communion be for the forgiveness of sins and for the glory of your holy name and that of your only Son and of your Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. Lord Jesus, our God and Savior, you became flesh for our sake, and by sacrificing yourself, you saved us. Deliver us from damnation, and make us temples of your holy name, for we are your people and your inheritance. We glorify and honor you, your Father, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. So just a reminder for those who wish to remain and pray in the church, you're welcome to stay as long as you wish, but just for those who wish to visit, for spacing and distance, just go outside on the sidewalk. And may Saints Peter and Paul grant you all an abundance of blessings for your generosity during this pandemic. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever.